Amazon story, uh, which is interesting, it had warned that it was going to be raising the price of Prime membership. It said it was going to be by twenty to forty dollars. It's at the lower end of that by twenty dollars. So now it's going to ninety nine bucks if you have a Prime men membership. It was announced on the website this morning. Uh, one thing that stays the same is a new service it's offering, Prime Fresh, same day local delivery service with groceries and whatnot, uh, will remain at two hundred ninety nine dollars. They have a student membership for Prime that goes to forty nine dollars. So can, can I just geek out on you all for a second? Do it. I adjusted for inflation going wow. back uh, nine years from when uh, Prime really yeah. took in, in place. Mm -hmm. You adjust for inflation, only ninety four sixty two. So they only raised it four more bucks than they would have in order to break even adjust for inflation. I'm going to out geek you. No, you can't. I adjusted for inflation. Seventy nine was a Prime number. Ninety nine is not. <laughs> wow. Wow, all right, you okay. definitely like, win. And that was part of the deal. Like they, they sort of just. They didn't really know how to price it in the beginning, and they're like, well, we just want it to interest people, and 79 is cute. It's a prime number, so let's do that. Yeah. Well, and here, here's something, too. If you look at the annual um, fee here is $99. The annual, on an annual basis, Netflix is $96, whereas, of course, with this, you're not just getting streaming like you are with Amazon. Mm -hmm. You're also getting free delivery. And people aren't, aren't grandfathered in from what my understanding is, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you can, they, they send you an email or something saying, hey, you have yeah. to renew it and it would right. be at this higher price. Because usually we thought they might do some grandfathering in. Here's the thing. Yeah. People might actually do more ordering, right? I mean, if you're paying yes. more for delivery, you'll say, okay, I'm going to buy that extra thing from Amazon this month because I need to get my money back on the delivery. Yeah, I'm interested worth. in seeing how this works out with uh, fresh deliveries because that is really, really hard to do. A lot of companies mm -hmm. have messed that up. A lot of companies have taken a back trying to figure out how to get that right and Amazon tends to get things right but uh, I would be worried about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, looking at Fannie and Freddie, another thing to be worried about these days. Could the end be upon us? Our own Peter Cook spoke with Senator Mike Crapo, who is co-writing the bill to wind down the institutions and Senator told Peter that he thinks his bill is something Congress can all agree on. Take a listen. Well, you know, around here with the gridlock we have, it's always dangerous to predict success, but we have a lot of, of uh, factors coming together here. We've got a strong bipartisan agreement on moving forward. There is very positive reaction in the industry and in the public with regard to what we're proposing. And I think we have a good chance. This is probably the biggest thing, if not one of the biggest things that's going to happen in this Congress. And I think there's a good chance that it will make it through. Okay, so as for how investors get treated in all of this, well, Senator Crapo told Bloomberg that that decision will be made by the courts, and not Congress. Of course, we're referring to uh, some of the noise we've heard from some hedge funds. Uh, but, you know, here's the problem with this, guys. At the end of the day, even with this new proposal, basically the government's still ultimately there to bail you out if needed. Because if your losses exceed 10%, uh, then they're there and they'll help you out. So I'm just asking the question, aren't you incentivized? If you've already got losses somewhere around 8 or 9%, yeah. why not make some more risky loans and like move it up to 10 and then have the government there to help At you At the out? very least, it's an explicit reinsurance contract. So what the U.S. government has for so many risks, for flood risk, for financial risk, is, is an implicit reinsurance contract. We sort of vaguely know the government will do something. With this idea, I think it's a good bill. Um, at least we know exactly what the terms are. And I think that's, I mean... We, but the government's, government's still there. I mean, why not out. just get the government? If you're saying, I need to wind down Fannie and Freddie, mm -hmm. why not just do it? Why not get the government out of the business of lending could or that, securitizing but, these loans? But could that even pass? I mean, the problem with this is that you have to appeal to Republicans and Democrats. It's mm -hmm. an extraordinarily fine line, especially with the midterms coming up. So if you did yeah. something like that that's mm -hmm. so drastic, you would lose half of Congress I, right I don't, there. You know, I think not only, I think you might lose all of Congress, actually. Because as much as I like this idea, I guarantee you it won't sell with the American public. Because uh -huh. at the end of the day, if you don't have Fannie and Freddie, uh, it is going to have an effect on people's ability to get a loan and thus, therefore, the 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 prices uh, on on homes. That but we aren't see. the down payments still really small? I mean, aren't they saying yeah. like five or six percent? I mean, they're not even going up to the twenty percent that we have here in New York. I think this is kind of a fascinating moment in Congress when you have uh, it is genuinely a bipartisan bill. We haven't seen one of those in a very long mm -hmm. time. And Bob Corker, you know, is, is sort of generally known as a friend to capital, and he's saying uh, to the hedge funds that have invested in Fannie and Freddie, "Good luck." We're not going to help you out. That's not our but, plan. It's not Congress's job to do this. But that still doesn't mean it's going to get passed, right? I mean, no. even though Crapo is optimistic, the yes. closer we get to those midterms, the tougher it's going to be. And yeah. good, I good ideas go to the House to die. No, and, and, and realistically, I mean, how do you Sorry, how does this play in Peoria? I mean, how do you sell this to people when they're worried about their own value of their own home? Um, you know, it's going to affect 
a, a, a multitude of homeowners. I would just say that if you have less ability to lend or if, if it's going to cost mm -hmm. more to get a loan, then that home price is going to be affected. Hazardous. Yeah. Speaking of hazardous, I'm talking about hazardous air pollution. We go on along those lines. You should probably be paid extra for it if you're in that kind of environment. And Panasonic said today it's going to give employees in China a wage premium to make up for the dangerous levels of smog in the region. You know, uh, I knew some people who work for the State Department who was stationed in China probably about 10 years ago. Cush apartment, three bedrooms, amazing high rise. Would have cost a fortune if you were in New York. And they got hazard pay. Mm. <laughs> Part of that being because it wasn't necessarily considered an industrialized first world country, but also you had to deal with the pollution. Totally fascinating. I, this is awful. I think this is an existential problem for China, which is that their response right now, and they really know that they have a problem with pollution. Their response is to do what China does, which is to throw money at it. And, you know, the way you fix pollution on a, on a sort of state-by-state -state level, at a very local level, is that you allow dissent and you allow court cases and you allow things to fix themselves. But, but also it's an energy thing, too, because you have 65% of its energy comes from coal yeah. until you're actually able to diversify into something meaningful. I mean, look, yeah. how much solar energy can you get out of those pictures? Yeah. Uh, you, you just don't have any other <laughs> options. It still has to operate. And interestingly enough, it's not very different from other industrialized nations, like even London a few hundred years ago. Yeah. But global warming is what's kind of tipping the scales a little bit. If they want to fix this, they're going to have to sacrifice growth. And that's a real problem for right. the Communist Party Which because, the yeah, their, their, their contract with China is we're going to keep giving you growth. And if they have to start sacrificing that to fix the environment, that, that alters the terms of the implicit contract. Uh, would you move your family to China No, right I would now? not. Yeah. No, but we know, we know what it's like to not live under those conditions. Whereas from what I've heard anecdotally, admittedly, yeah. from folks who have traveled there, business people who have traveled there and people they've dealt with, when you get used to it, you don't realize that how, how, perhaps well, we how bad it is. We do see the Chinese elite leaving. And they do say explicitly, this is why we're leaving. The pollution oh, is too and bad. I, and I know a lot of American business owners that don't like going over there because of this. And so, you know, ultimately it will have an effect on their economy if they're yeah. not able to figure it out. Moving on to McDonald's. McDonald's work has filed seven class action lawsuits against the company. Class action lawsuits in California and Michigan, New York, claiming McDonald's is systematically stealing employees' wages by forcing them to work off the clock, shaving hours off their time cards, and not paying them overtime, among other practices. Practices. One worker said in the press release, quote, our wages are already at rock bottom. Is it time for McDonald's to stop skirting the law to pad profits? Or rather, it is time for McDonald's to stop skirting the law. Um, you know, this gets at it, the issue that, that, you know, we've seen front and center, the executive order by the president to deal with uh, overtime for those employees that are making uh, $455 a week or more and they're being classified as management. In many cases, they're fast food workers or convenience store workers and they get classified as management and then, you know, can work 50, 60, you name it, hours a week and not get paid any more money for that. What's amazing here is that that hasn't, I'm going to geek out on you too, it hasn't been indexed for inflation. So if you actually index it for inflation, that same worker should be making $975, which is more relevant today than when they put this in in 1975. Well, whether, whether you're looking at the overtime issue, the minimum wage issue, there's obviously this huge push in this country and huge talk about inequality among pay. Mm -hmm. And whether it's going to be changed by executive order, by Congress, by the courts, to your point, like, like in, uh, it's not happening in China. Yeah. I mean, it seems like change is coming in some way. It's, it's just funny. a question these, of how it's going to come. We, we've started to think about this, uh, all the, we talk about this a lot at the economics desk at Business Week, and we keep coming down to the same conclusion, which is very simple. People don't make enough money. I mean, it may actually be that simple. Um, but here's the thing, it's not, that's not new news. What is new is the midterm elections. And this is going to pull no, very well but, but with... It, but it is new in that, you know, I think this generation especially has struggled with this, because in a previous generation, you could get that job is in the manufacturing yeah. plant that would pay true, you enough to you know take care of your family uh, and maybe have just one earner. And, and, and today's society has completely changed where you've got two earners now in most families and people still really struggling to make ends meet. And just look at credit card household debt rates yeah. had alongside continued to go up. I think in fairness to McDonald's also, um, there has to be a cultural change going on within McDonald's leadership as well, which is that they used to provide part-time jobs for kids. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. um, and they're very, they didn't think that they had to provide for people who had to raise families. And so they're now coming to terms with the fact that they don't have 17 year olds on staff anymore. They have parents. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. And also the issue with the franchisees versus the actual yeah. parent, right? I mean, you have 90% franchisees that's going to wind up hurting those small businesses in some way, too. How do you deal with that? Yeah. Um, let's talk about another business that has been suffering, that's SeaWorld. It's just out with its fourth quarter earnings. Uh, we're looking at a just as loss per share of 13 cents. It's a penny narrower than analysts were looking for. Revenue, which rose 3%, a little bit better than estimated. Uh, the company had come out recently with its fourth quarter attendance records and said attendance was attendance numbers, I should say, and said attendance was at a record in the fourth quarter. All of this trying to combat the public image problem it has from that movie Blackfish, the documentary that alleges mistreatment of the orcas um, at the parks. The question is, how did they get those people through the door? Did they get them through the door by offering a lot of discounts? They were offering Groupons for the first time. Um, and so it's unclear what the real demand is. One thing I should mention as well, that the um, year revenue forecast is below what analysts were looking for. So that's something to uh, keep tabs on as well. But it, it's still not clear what the long-term effect of this film is going to be on, the, on its business. Did you guys see it? I, I didn't see it. Did anyone see it? The table? I have not seen it. I think this has affected the business model of the circus as well. I took my mm. kids to the circus last <laughs> really? week out to the Nassau Coliseum, Ringling yeah. Brothers. And um, what, what had changed since I was a kid was that all over there were posters and signs and discussions of just what Ringling Brothers was doing for wildlife, oh, what it was doing to help elephants in the wild. They really <laughs> recognize that people are aware of this. Well, that's a good thing. It's a good thing. That's a good thing. It shows you the power of journalism and, you know, the power of that documentary. Yes, we're fixing everything. But why are clowns creepy? We can't fix that. We just need to fix wages, right? <laughs>